In this video, I want to give a quick introduction on how to write a simple reverse mode automatic differentiation engine for computational chains in Python, but just using base Python. So here I used the math package and I imported the exponential, the sine and the cosine function because the function we want to differentiate is given as a lambda on x and it shall be the exponential on the sine on the sign of x. Let's hit shift enter to execute that cell. And then we can query the function, for instance, at 2.0 to get that particular value. Based on the chain rule, we can derive a closed form symbolic derivative. Let's call this one f prime. And this one is another lambda. And first we have the outermost derivative and the derivative of the exponential is just the exponential. So it's exponential of sine of sine of x. And then we have one layer deeper where the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So we will get the cosine of the sine of x. And finally, we can multiply this with the innermost derivative, which is the cosine of x. If enter again, then let's also query our derivative function at the same point. And then we get this value, which is the derivative of the function. And we can also validate this derivative by using finite differences, so finite differences. And for this, we will take the original primal function and evaluate it at 2.0 and add a small value. So for instance, 10 to the minus eight, then we subtract the function value at the point, And then we divide by this little nudge that we did. This is one e minus eight, shift enter again. And then we see the derivative given by the finite difference approximation, at least in the first digits is similar. And as such, we can be quite sure that our symbolic derivative is correct. Okay, but for this video, we are not interested in symbolic differentiation or finite differentiation, but rather in automatic differentiation. And for a very particular case, because here we restricted ourselves to a computational chain. So we have an input X, which goes through multiple operations, which have a one to one map. So they take one quantity as an input and output another quantity. The more general case for a computational graph, which might also be more relevant towards deep learning, builds upon similar ideas, but is a little bit more complicated to implement. So let's restrict ourselves for now. And in essence, each automatic differentiation engine is also a library of primitive operations, because essentially what it does is taking all the operations in our chain or in our graph and transforming them into versions, which also allow cotangent propagation or more precisely cotangent backpropagation. So for this, let us implement the corresponding rules. So we need a rule for the sine function and we need a rule for the exponential functions because these are the two functions that we have in kind of our library in order to build the f function. So let's define another function and let's call it the sine backprop rule. And this one takes a primal input x. And then what it does, it first produces the primal output y, which is the sine applied to x, but then it also defines a pullback operation. In essence, this is a closure function, which we will then return, which allows us to back propagate cotangent information. It will make sense in a second. So let's define the sign pullback, which takes a cotangent information on the output. So from the primal pass, the output was called y. And now we have a cotangent information on y. And then it back propagates that on cotangent information on X by the following rule with Y cotangent multiplied with the cosine evaluated at the primal point. And then it returns the X cotangent. And then our outer rule, the backprop rule returns both the primal output as well as the pullback operation. Shift enter registers this function. And if you want more details on why these pullback rules are the way they are, I have some videos linked in the top right of this particular video with their detailed derivation. So let's move on. Then we also need the exponential backprop rule, which also takes a primal input and then it produces a primal output. Why? By applying the exponential function to it. We again define a closure function. So the exponential pullback which takes again the cotangent information on the output and then back propagates that to the cotangent on the input by taking the cotangent on the output and multiplying it with the exponential 
on the input. But hey, we see we already computed the exponential on the input, so we could reuse certain parts of the computation from the primal pass. And this can be done by just placing the y here. And then basically what this closure function does, it captures the environment, so it captures the value of y and it reuses it here. So we don't have to repeat uh, this computation. Potentially also for the sign, there's also some savings. There are some special computational routines which compute the sine and the cosine at the same time with fewer costs than just computing the sine and the cosine individually. So there is a lot of room for potential improvements and savings which can easily be incorporated in this closure-based automatic differentiation structure. Nevertheless, this is our x cotangent and we can return it in the closure function and then we can close the closure function and finally return the primal output as well as the pullback function. Then shift enter registers this cell again. Now we have to somehow collect these rules and I think the most naive approach here would be to use a dictionary and I want to call this the primitive rules and it is a dictionary and now we associate a backprop rule to each of the functions we want to use in our computational chain or respectively the computational graph. So we will say for sine the corresponding rule is the sine backprop rule and for the exponential the corresponding rule will be the exponential backprop rule. And if you use any automatic differentiation engine in Python, let it be PyTorch, TensorFlow or JAX, you are essentially using operations from the library. So they provide you with numerical operations like matrix multiplications, sigmoid function activations, vector additions or something. And for all these functions, and loosely speaking, they have these primitive rules somewhere registered in the library. And this then allows them to do the craft transformation or the chain transformation, we will see in a second, for you to provide you with derivative information. So let's do the heart of automatic differentiation. And I want to call this operation the vector Jacobian product. And basically it shall be a function that takes in a computational chain as well as a primal point at which you want to evaluate the chain and then it produces a primal pass and records the pullback operations and then produces a vector Jacobian product function or a pullback function which you can query at a cotangent information to then backpropagate that. Okay, that might sound abstract, but we, I hope we will make sense of it in a second. Okay, so this VJP function takes the chain and the primal and now we do a primal pass which goes through each of the operations in the chain and saves the pullback operations accordingly. So for this we have to create some sort of a container to record the pullback operations and I want to call that the pullback stack and this should be an empty list for now. And then we also need to record the current value, so the current primal value and this one starts at the primal position where we want to evaluate the chain at. And then we first perform a primal pass. And for this, we loop through the operation in the chain. And again, recall, we made this assumption that we only have these unary mappings. So they take in one input and produce one output. This simplifies the, the graph traversal. So the operation in the chain now shall be, for instance, a sine or an exponential. And first I want to retrieve the corresponding rule by querying the primitive rules dictionary at the particular operation. And then we basically call this rule on the current value. And as the type in suggests, this one returns a value as well as another function. So it returns the current value, which we want to overwrite as well as the current pullback operation. And then we can append this pullback operation to our pullback stack by saying pullback stack dot append current pullback. So we are saving basically a function in this list container. And that's the primal pass. At the end of the primal pass, our current value will be the output of the chain, so the primal output. And now we want to write another closure function which traverses the list reversely in order to go from the cotangent at the output all the way to the cotangent in the beginning. So let's define a function and call it the pullback 
which takes in the cotangent information. And this basically now is the reverse path. And we will again record a current cotangent, which starts at the cotangent at the end. And now we have a back operation. And this back operation is in our pullback stack. And this one we are traversing reversely. So it'll say reversed pullback stack. And now we can override the current cotangent by calling the back function on the current cotangent. And at the end of this loop, we will then have the current cotangent being the cotangent associated to the value with the primal. And we can return this here. This is the current cotangent. And then ultimately the VJP function shall return both the primal output. So this one is the current value as well as this pullback convenience function. And I hope this kind of provides you with one particular view on automatic differentiation engines and that those are just function transformation engines which apply primitive rules to build larger VJP or larger rules for any kind of computational graph or computational chain you can imagine. Okay, shift enter again. And now this is registered. Let's call it and try it out. So let's call the VJP function on a chain. So what is the chain? Now we want to look at the function that we want to differentiate, which is exponential sine sine x. So basically the chain of operations going from the innermost to the outermost will be sine sine exponential. And we want to query it at point 2.0. And this one produces an out value as well as a pullback function. Let's just call it the back function and execute that. Let's look at the out value. This is the same as the primal operation. I mean, essentially we just called the same functions as in the lambda that we had in the beginning. And now we can also call the back function and we will call the back function at 1.0 in order to get the derivative. And this is what we will get. This is the derivative we also saw with our symbolic function f prime. Why do we call it at 1.0? And the essence for this is that we are evaluating a vector Jacobian product. So this is a little bit more general because you could also look at functions which not only take scalars, but that take vectors and as such derivatives of outputs with respect to inputs are Jacobians. And this vector Jacobian product computes the effect of the Jacobian if it was left multiplied with a vector. And in essence, in our case, the Jacobian of something which has a scalar input and a scalar output is just a derivative. So the vector Jacobian product in that case would compute the effect of if that derivative evaluated at the particular primal was left multiplied with some scalar. And if we choose the scalar to be 1.0, we are not scaling it. So we are just evaluating the derivative value as is. Okay, we can also write a convenience function, which basically does both of this for us in order to provide us with the gradient and the value information. This is just syntactic sugar. Let's call this function val and cred. It produces the value as well as the gradient or the derivative based on a chain as well as a primal position. And also to be a little bit more fair, let's just call it an X position. And then was it what it does? It produces a Y value as well as a pullback or to be consistent, let's also just call it a back. This is the VJP function applied to the chain as well as the primal X. Then we will get the derivative by querying the back function at 1.0 and then we will just return y as well as the derivative. Let's query that function val and cred at the same chain which was sine sine exponential primal point 2.0 and then compare this with the symbolic functions that we have so f at 2.0 as well as f prime at 2.0 and then we see those values are identical. And this also again highlights that automatic differentiation in general provides derivative information at machine precision, since it uses the same algorithmic graph of the implementation of the function that you use for the primal evaluation. So in other words, that you would code anyways in order to evaluate the function and then modifies this graph 
or in our case, this chain, to produce derivative information. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content on automatic differentiation. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.